dance again here on a Wednesday morning as we welcome Brian Johnson from the Fulton County Community Foundation. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Randy. Time now for our Community Foundation uh, monthly visit and uh, kind of uh, wrap it up 2022. We are. That's kind of what we're looking at this 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 morning is a year in review of what we've done this year. So does it seem like it's been 12 months? I'm not sure. Seems like it's gone pretty fast. <laughs> it, it has gone fast. It was fast, just yeah. January a couple couple months uh, ago. Exactly. We get things but started anyway. But we've had a lot of great things to be able to celebrate this year. Um, so we'll we'll talk about some of those things as we go through. But um, wanted to give a couple of current event related items. Um, first of all, um, just a note about our office. I know some folks um, want to make end of year donations um, we will have a couple of days that will be closed for christmas and new year so um, this friday will be closed for christmas eve of yeah. course if you listen to the weather forecast i think most things will be closed <laughs> yeah. that day as well um, and then we also our office will also be closed on monday in celebration of the christmas holiday okay um, and then on december 31st which is a friday um, our office will be closed at noon so if folks want to make that last minute gift and drop it off in person, um, they'll want to do it before noon on the 31st. Okay. Um, and then our office will be actually be closed on um, January 2nd in celebration of the New Year's there holiday. You go. Um, so if you're out there and want to drop off a check before the end of the year, you have until noon on the 31st yeah. to do that. There you go. So um, something else that um, has been really exciting um, has been a new software rollout. Mm -hmm. So um, we just sent out at the start of November information to donors who have funds with the Community Foundation. Some of them have signed up. Um, if you got that email and didn't sign up, let us know because we can send you another link and get you set up on that. Um, it's a really neat way for donors to be able to see real time what the fund is doing. Um, for donors that have a donor advised fund, um, they can actually make those grant requests online, save some paper and save some time in the process, <laughs> makes it easier for everybody. So if you received that and didn't sign up yet, let Still us can. know. We'll get you signed up for it. Um, it's, it's one of those steps that we've um, been looking at taking for a few years to provide some better services to donors and fund founders. So I'm really excited. Um, note about scholarships. Maybe we have that time of year. It's that time to fill them out with this break coming up. If you haven't started working on that and you're a graduating senior from one of our area schools, um, you still have until February 1st to do that. But um, That'll be here the, before you know That'll it. be here. <laughs> Just like we talked about the end of the year, February yeah. 1st, that's not a, that's a little over yeah. a month away. Right. It doesn't sound like it, but yeah. it is. So, um, so take advantage of the time that you have over the Christmas break to be able to um, fill out those applications. If you have any issues, uh, we're on a, a little bit different system than we have been in the past. So I know some folks have had some um, questions or maybe um, had difficulty finding different pieces that are needed. Um, don't hesitate to give um, us a call. Our scholarship coordinator, Shannon Berger, would be more than happy to help you work through any problems that you have or questions. But we're off to a good start. I know a number of students have already started filling out those applications. Awesome. Um, really exciting time. Talking about scholarships, we can say as heard on WROI. <laughs> um, congratulations to the um, 2023 Lilly Endowment Community Scholarship recipient for Fulton County, William Van Heinegen. Um, congratulations to William. We also wanted to recognize the finalists. Um, this is always a good group of students. Yes. Um, I always encourage folks, you know, if you say kids are just tearing things up or they're, they're what's wrong with the world, I'd encourage you to sit on a scholarship committee because you, you'll learn about some great things. So um, congratulations to William, but also congratulations to the finalists. Um, I want to recognize Callie Watson, Braden Zink, Macy Nelson, and Olivia Paul um, for being in that selection process. And congratulations um, to those students. This, was, this is a group of five outstanding um, young community members and we're, we're really excited about their future and what they're going to bring to our community and to our world as we as we go so um, also wanted to mention we had a great giving Tuesday um, that's always a good thing 
I think you were there. I was there. It was, there was a lot of people the there. Was yeah, there. Yeah, was we had a lot of uh, people coming in. And had out. a lot of folks stop in and participate during that day. Of course, we had um, a matching opportunity available. Um, thank you to everybody who made it possible. We met all the matches for awesome. um, both the individual funds and also the community fund. Um, and we actually had a few donations trickle in after the fact. So I know I think our press release said we raised two hundred forty thousand dollars, but actually had a couple of checks show up in the mail. In that case, the check actually was in the mail. <laughs> um, but that total raised um, with that Giving Tuesday campaign um, was over two hundred sixty thousand dollars. Awesome! So thank you to everybody. Yes. Thank you to the crew at Rapid View for offering matching incentive thank you to all the donors who made a made a donation thank you to everybody who stopped in it's, it's really a great day to be able to celebrate nice. what the foundation has done in Fulton County so um, and again congratulations to Judy Climey yes um, we honored her with the 2022 lifetime philanthropy award now, part of what we wanted to do with that is recognize recognize the amount of time and talent that she puts into philanthropy, you know, a lot of times when we say philanthropy, we think about dollars. Yeah. And while that's part of it, <laughs> the time involved, if it weren't for good people like Judy, yeah. we wouldn't have a lot of things that we have in the community. Oh. So um, congratulations to Judy. Oh, and that's off to her. Thank you for all her service as somebody who moved to the community and stayed and, and really loves it. Um, I can say Fulton County is a better place because of Judy. Awesome. So, yes. so talk about year in review. Mm. We'll read some things. I have a long list. You made the comment. You said, you got three pages today. It's the Brian Johnson oh. hour. Part of, it, <laughs> part of it, I just wanted to go through it. And we talked a lot about our community funds and the yeah. grants. So I'm going to just start reading through a list. Go right here. ahead. So. These are some of the grants that donors made possible with our community funds. And we talked about community funds, those funds that donors have said here, here are the funds. We don't know what the most important thing is going to be today or in 10 years or in 20 years, but the community foundation is going to have a group of people that are looking out for that interest in the community. So these are some of the grants, um, almost $300,000 in grants amazing. in 2022. So. I'm just going to start reading the list. Okay. Akron Summer Music Program, hosted by the Akron Los Donis, Pickleball Courts, Splash Pad in the City Park, Akron Youth League Jock Boxes, Fulton County Housing Authority, Fulton County Habitat for Humanity, Science Central Outreach Program, Kiwana Fall Festival, American Legion Post 36 Handicap Door Opener, Intrepid Phoenix Recovery Program, Fulton County Drug Court, Fulton County Pork Producers, Kiwana Hardery, Bike Rodeo at the Cross Church, Times Theater Marquee Renovation, Grace Mops or Mothers of Preschoolers Program, Cardinal Services Pergola for Shade at Rochester Group Home, Junior Achievement, Nickel Plate Music and Art Festival, Rochester Youth Baseball Dugout Renovations, Youth Leagues in Akron, Fulton, Kiwana, Rochester, and Fulton County Soccer Association. Charity Tracker Software for Area Nonprofits. Recovery Cafe. Fulton County Promise Indiana 529 Program. Outlet Youth Center. Fulton County Preschool Program. Fulton County Firefighters Association Automatic CPR Devices. Fulton County United Way. United Ministries. United We Stand of Akron. Matthews Market. Kiwana Food Pantry. So when we talk about these community grants, we think about the things that, that have happened and maybe folks listening have participated or benefited from some of these things that we've been able to grant to. And it, it's really neat when we start thinking about how lives are impacted. Um, you have um, one that keeps popping up on our list is recovery programs, mm -hmm. um, helping folks work out of maybe a negative situation that they've been in. Or you think about some of the festivals that have happened. Um, Kiwana Fall Festival is always a great time in the, in the town of Kiwana. Um, some of those youth activities. And of course, the Youth Center had a big move this yeah. year and, and is really an amazing organization doing great things. Um, but you also think about those youth activities, whether it be 
baseball or softball or soccer or some of those programs and um, activities for kids to use. And um, we also think about some of the organizations that are supporting people in time of needs, um, whether it be with short-term rent assistance or um, food pantries. Right. We're, we're hearing a lot of food pantries saying, you know, we're, we're spending more on food, we're seeing more people, we're seeing people for the first time. And so some of those things, um, we're able to help provide some of those basic services. So really neat when you start thinking about the list and looking at some of the things that happened. Um, I don't think we can <coughs> probably get you over the splash pad today and have you run through. Uh, it. Might, might be a little, little chilly. Might be a little chilly today. Um, but things like that that I know that families this, this fall or you know, late late summer there it was it was packed. It was packed, and so um, I'm not sure how pickleball goes in the snow. Probably doesn't bounce so well. Probably but not. Some of those recreational activities, and you think about housing, a couple of the organizations, the Housing Authority and Habitat for Humanity, um, that are continuing to help provide services for folks that need housing. So, um, some of those wonderful projects that happen. So, I just wanted to take and point out some of the highlights from 2022. Of course, all these grants were great. Um, but some of the things that maybe were part of that or maybe happened outside of that. Um, something that we were able to provide this spring was a Bridges Out of Poverty workshop and a poverty simulation. Um, a really neat program that helps organizations better serve folks that they're dealing with. And the poverty simulation was fun because uh, we had an organization come in and you basically live the month in the life of somebody in poverty and dealing with those issues maybe from a different perspective yeah. than what you normally would do. And it was um, interesting to see the people that participated in that. I had a chance to participate in that and kind of sitting there thinking about, well, I can go do this. I mean, thinking yeah. about, wait a minute, yeah. I've got to borrow a car, I've got to wait till the bus comes past to be able to do this. So you think about some of those things. That was a, a, a good experience and a lot of the organizations that participated have said it, it gave them a new outlook and, and maybe some areas to be able to help folks with. Um, we mentioned during the grants the pickleball courts. Um, if you've been past the pickleball <laughs> courts, you know that they're getting used quite a bit. Yep. Um, thanks to the group, this was about a two-year project that came about um, this fall and able to celebrate the grand opening over by the city pool, um, back by where the old golf course pro shop was. Um, they have four nice courts there. I know there's some conversation about, well, is that enough courts or do we need some more? <laughs> so there's space there and that was part of the plan in the future, possibly. So um, wonderful to see those used. We mentioned the splash pad, a little bit chilly to run out there today, but right. um, that was always used during the summer. A really great project and, and something for families to enjoy. Um, Full disclosure, I haven't run through the splash pad uh, yet, but come on. that may be on the list for next next <laughs> spring go. once it go. warms up. Um, so that was an exciting thing to have happen. Um, the food pantry summit. Mm. Um, this is something that we brought together food pantries. Um, we weren't able to do it for a couple of years due to COVID. And so this year we brought together food pantries, um, provided some resources. And one thing that we did this year, in addition to food related items, um, we'll provide some information related to mental health and addiction services. Um, and a lot of the food pantry said thank you for that because when you're at a food pantry, the last time I had the opportunity to, to help at one, none of the questions that I was asked was related to food. <laughs> so to give these organizations some additional resources. Um, scholarships. Over the year, we've been able to award over $167,000 in scholarships. That doesn't include the Lilly Endowment Community yeah. Scholarship. Um, that happens as well, but those are those are financial awards, but they're also encouragement. We, yeah. we talked about the 65 plus scholarships that we have that are encouraging students to take that next step. So, um, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention the passing of Dick Belcher. Of course, Dick was a, a big um, philanthropist in our community, um, passed away early this spring and has made an impact and will continue to make an impact on our community mm -hmm. um, because of some of the things that he and Suzanne and his family have done and will continue to do. So, um, unfortunately, we lost Dick, but his memory is still alive. Yes, it is. Um, the Bark Park. 
Ah, yes. Been to I have yet? not. I know okay. people that have been, though. Well, that's, uh, a, like, that's a great place. At Richland there. Restoration Nature Park, a great area. There was a leadership academy group that started this project a few years ago, and they had their grand opening this spring. Mm -hmm. It was exciting to be able to see that come about um, in a place for animals to go and have fun and run and get out and um, it, it's a really great project that has yeah. come about this year. Um, something else, Women's Giving Circle. Mm -hmm. It had been a couple of years again due to COVID since we've been able to have that event. Um, we had it this fall. That group provided $9,000 in grants to different organizations including things like the Youth Center, the One School, One Book program that happens at Riddle Elementary, 4-H Dog Club, and United Ministries. Um, so thank you to all the members who participated in that event. Um, another thing, we talked about some recovery programs, the Road to Recovery. Um, that was an event that started last year and continued this year with <coughs> some softball games mm -hmm. and, and some fun out at the Blackadder Sports Complex. Um, provided some information about available recovery programs in our community and really celebrated and, and built some collaboration. So great to see that some new funds that were started this year. Uh, the Fulton County Chamber of Commerce Fund that will help provide some um, beautification for our community. Um, thank you to the Chamber for spearheading that effort. They do a wonderful job of promoting not only businesses but our community as well. Um, the Brett Blacketer Memorial Sports Complex, just I think the ink is drying on that right now, <laughs> um, created a, a new endowment fund that will help support the soccer and base and softball programs out at the sports complex. Awesome. If you haven't been out there on a game day or game weekend, it's a busy place. you have youth softball, you've got youth soccer, you've got middle and high school soccer. It's really a great um, asset for our community and not only for community members but brings in folks from the outside of the community as well. Um, and another new fund that was created in memory of a special individual is a Tom Reed Memorial Scholarship. We'll help provide support for Rochester High School graduates. Um, Tom was a, a longtime bus driver in our community and wanted to continue to support those kids that he felt like were his own because he was able to, to care for them and deliver them safely to school and home, um, but that scholarship will be making a big impact. And the last thing that I wanted to mention was something big that happened this last weekend, the Times Theater marquee oh, renovation. Yes. Awesome. Saw that. Awesome Friday night. Saw that live and it was just a perfect setting for the the celebration of the work. Of course, it's been fun this year to hear people say, well, I'm glad they're finally doing something at the theater. <laughs> and that's what it looks like for yeah. somebody that may not have been able to see the inside of it. They've really been working on this for probably about the last eight years, getting it ready to open. And I hear rumors that early in 2023, there'll yeah. be a grand opening of the inside, but really need to see how that marquee has been restored and um, modernized with the digital sign, yeah. but that neon is pretty cool. Kept the neon and <laughs> the LEDs. It's, and, yeah. it's, it's really neat looking, so if you haven't been on Main Street in Rochester since last Friday, check it out, yeah. especially if you have time to go out overnight. I'm not saying maybe tomorrow night, maybe <laughs> good, <laughs> good night to check it out, night. <laughs> but um, it, it's really neat. We've been able to grant over $135,000 so far to that project for the marquee renovation, the facade restoration, some of the things that are happening on the interior of the theater. Um, it's getting close. This has been a long time project coming, but kind of one of those, one of those centerpieces yeah. of our downtown. So awesome. So it's, it's been a very good year. And when we think about between our community fund grants, we talk about $300,000 there. We talk about almost $170,000 in scholarships. You start looking at combined with all the other funds that we have over a million dollars put back into Fulton County um, because of donors through the Community Foundation. And the beauty of that is with endowment funds, that continues to go. So next year we'll, we'll be talking about some <laughs> new grants and, and really exciting. So, But if folks are doing that last minute end of year planning, um, you can give a gift to 
someone in honor of someone in memory of someone that will continue to make the make an impact in our community going forward so um, still have time to do that um, like I mentioned we'll have a couple of days where our office will be closed but if you're snowed in on Friday <laughs> or Saturday and want to make a gift we do have online giving as well um, so you can make those make those end of year gifts as well so if folks are interested um, finding out more about what we had going on at the foundation this last year or what's coming up. Uh, I'd encourage you to check us out. We're on Facebook, Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Of course, that's the three counties that the NICF deals with, Fulton, Miami, and Stark counties. Um, you can always check us out online, nicf.org. Um, give us a call, 574-224-3223 or on the days that we're open, stop by our office, 227 East 9th Street here in Rochester. We always always love to hear ideas or uh, maybe questions. You think about a lot of the projects that I listed in these grants, and the first step in that was somebody saying, hey, I have an idea for this. And then more people get involved, and then all of a sudden we have good things happening in our community. So um, thank you to folks who have donated made these grants possible but also thank you to folks who have stepped up and said you know what I can be that somebody that helps make this project happen and all of a sudden we turn around and it feels like the year just went by but we're celebrating great things like <coughs> theater opening yes. and pickleball courts and splash pads and concerts in our community squares and and all these great things so thank you to everybody throughout the year who gave of their time and talents and financially to make Fulton County a great place to live. Ryan, thanks for your time here this morning. I want to wish you and everybody over at the Foundation a very Merry Christmas and yes. a Happy New Year. And we'll look forward to uh, hearing uh, great things coming in 2023. We're looking forward to it. Thank you. Thanks, Ryan Johnson of the Fulton County Community.